in situations like skulls and burns, things that can happen acutely and considering, you know, you just need to grab the remedy and give it straight away. But in many situations like that, especially when you have kids, those remedies always need to be handy just to go and grab. Like the Arnica, Arnica it sits in our house near the teas and tea and coffee pots. It's like that's the place we, we will go to if we need Arnica. But these all these other remedies as well are good. All these remedies that I talk about every single week, what we call the polycrest remedies. These means that that means remedies with many uses. Uh, we use them all the time. They have such such big action. So let's talk about scalds and burns, the top homeopathic remedies. So let's just look at scalds and burns. So these are damage to the skin, both of them, burns and scalds, usually caused by some form of heat. And both are treated in the same way. So a burn is often caused by dry heat, like an iron. You know, people get iron burns when they're doing the ironing um, or from a fire. For example, and a scald is something that often is to do with uh, wet, like steam or water, hot water. So that we treat them the same way, uh, and the remedies would be the same uh, because it's, it depends on what the effects are. So burns can be, as you know, if you have ever burnt yourself, can be very, very painful and may cause red or peeling skin. It can cause blistering as well. It can go into a blister, swelling, and if it's more severe, you know, we go charred skin. I mean, they can be, as you know. Burns can go very, very deep. And the amount of pain that you feel is not always showing how serious the burn is because the more serious the burn, often it damages the nerve and the nerve endings. And so you might sometimes not really feel it when it's a severe burn and can feel painless. But obviously for things like that, you need to get urgent medical attention. So treating basic sort of burn skulls, get the person away from the heat source to stop, stop the burning. Remove any clothing or jewelry near the burnt area of skin, including, including baby's nappies, if it's a baby. But don't remove anything that's stuck to the skin, okay, where the burn is. You can cool the burn with cool or lukewarm water running for 20 or 30 minutes. Do not use ice because, again, that can damage the tissue if it's burnt or ice water or any creams or greasy substances like butter. Especially if it's quite severe burning, you've got to go to the in a hospital or the ER or the um, A&E department of a hospital, they're just going to need to clean it anyway and clean the wound. Now, sometimes people go into shock after a burn, especially quite a bad burn. Make sure the person keeps warm with a blanket and don't make care it doesn't run, you know, touch the affected area. And after cooling the burn, cover the, you can sometimes cover the burn with some cling film uh, or a clean plastic bag, um, especially if you're going to be going, you know, to the hospital. Um, and if it's an acid or chemical burn, Dial 999, which is in the UK, the emergency number, or whatever number is in your country, emergency number, and carefully try to remove the chemical, any contaminating clothing, and rinse the affected area with as much clean water as possible. Okay, but you need to get advice. And when to get medical attention? Obviously, it depends how serious a burn is. It may not be possible to treat it at home. But for minor burns, keep the burn clean. Don't burst any blisters if it blisters. But more serious burns require professional medical attention. And you should always go to the A&E or ER department for all chemical and electrical burns, large or deep burns. So any burn bigger than the injured person's hand, you need to get medical attention. Burns that cause white or charred skin of any size. Uh, and burns on the neck, face, hands, feet, joints of the genital area. OK, so you need to get medical attention for that. But we're going to talk about some remedies for simple burns and skulls that you'll get in the home. Now, we're going to talk about first degree burns. So this is often burns caused by dry heat or, as we said, skulls by moist seeps, such as steam or hot liquids. Um, and this is where it damages the most outer layer of the skin. And this is classed as a first degree burn. And it'll produce redness, soreness and swelling, sometimes blistery. But that means it's then going in more to a, a second degree. Uh, but again, put in the cold water immediately, but not ice water or luke, use lukewarm water. But also you can get these first degree burns from the sun. So as well as like burning yourself on an iron or a fire or steam from a kettle or hot drink or hot water, boiling water, also from the sun as well. You get, obviously, you know, you get, can get severe burns from the sun. So as I always say, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let people know, share the link that we're at. All the videos are there. That all the videos that we've done now uh, are on there. Everything from sore throats, coughs, astitis, conjunctivitis, period pain. I've covered so many 
areas on the top sort of remedies, like top five, top six, top nine uh, remedies for you to use. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Then you'll know when we, a, a video is released, a new video, you'll get the notification straight away. And also check us out, CHE, the Center for Homeopathic Education, if you want to find out about any courses that we run, because we run courses from beginner's level all the way to practitioner level and beyond as well as postgraduate. So let's look at some of the homeopathic remedies for skulls and burns. So the first remedy, arsenicum. So with arsenicum, they will have burns with marked pain, uh, anxiety, and restlessness. Remember, this is the keynote for arsenicum. It's the anxiety and the restlessness. They just need to move around. The skin is going to be red, swollen, burning. It can be burning, very sensitive to touch. So these are quite deep burn, they're, they're quite horrible burns, these can be. And when I say horrible, painful, very painful, very burning. Uh, very, They can feel very chilly uh, after they've burnt themselves, feel very chilly uh, and feel exhausted, okay, feel tight. Again, these are key notes for arsenicum. Worse for cold application, which is unusual, uh, around midnight and worse around touch. So if the burn's going to feel worse, it's often around that time modality, around midnight. Um, but better for warm, dry applications. They want some warmth to it. It might be mild warmth, but they want warmth. And they want warmth generally anyway because they feel chilly. And they're thirsty for small sips. Okay, They don't glug water. They're thirsty for cold sips. So remember with arsenicum, it's the, it's the pain with anxiety and restlessness. Okay, And also the chilliness as well. But the worse for cold applications, it's going to make it feel worse. Next remedy is belladonna. So this is really good for things like sunburn or burns with a dry, hot, bright red skin. And again, with belladonna, you know the classic, it's burning pain, throbbing as well. It will throb, there's throbbing with the pain. And it radiates heat. They may have throbbing and pulsating headache at the same time as the burn, which again is another keynote of belladonna. Or they can have, if they've got sunburn, they can also have a throbbing headache from being exposed to the sun. And again, this can get worse, or, or, or especially the burn can get worse around late afternoon and continues into the night, particularly sunburn. So it can start to really come after 3 p.m. Often that's a keynote, again, modality for, for belladonna. Worse for touch, worse for being heated, worse for any jarring. So you slightly touch, oh, watch my, oh, watch it. So very sensitive to that touch jarring anyway, or being heated. Can crave lemons or lemonade, can be a big again, keynote for belladonna, but they are really thirsty for cold water and they will glug it, okay? Opposite to, to um, arsenicum would be small sip, sips. This is actually, they're feeling really hot and they will really drink water, but they can have this craving for lemons or lemonade, big keynote for belladonna. Okay, so again, if you have a burn, it could be sunburn with dry, right, Bright, dry, hot, bright red skin, then think of belladonna. Next remedy, cantharis. This is probably the most common remedy used in scalds and burns. So here the symptoms are intense, rapid, extremely painful, and there's a cutting, smarting, raw, burning pain with cantharis. This is probably one of the most common remedies I use in these situations. First remedy you reach for in the remedy kit. The skin can be red and hot, can be, sometimes have a little blisters, but it burns as if it's on fire. Real intensity to cantharis. And they can get, have small little vesicles that coalesce to form a larger blister with a burning pain, again, with smarting and sometimes a bit of swelling as well. Now, these are better, cantharis is better for cold applications. In fact, it's better that as soon as it starts to get, say, you put a, a cold flannel on or Something, as soon as it starts getting warm or the water, you put your hand in water, as soon as it gets a little bit warm, then it, the pain really comes back. So they really need it to be cold. Worse for touch, worse for movement. And again, this can be really good for severe sunburn as well, of, as well as scalds and burns. So again, great remedy, very intense, smart, raw, burning pain with cantharis, but remember they're really better for cold application. As soon as you remove it or it gets warm, then the pain really comes back. Next remedy is sol. Now we talked about this when we did holidays, uh, homeopathy in holidays. This is really good for the sun, as you can tell by the name. Um, can we use before or during and, and or when you return after being in the strong sun, but they have 
they have a real sensitivity to the sun. Uh, they really burn easily or are affected by the sun. So they can get itchy, red skin, red blotches from sunlight, get painful eyes, photophobia from sunlight, blurry vision and headache. Um, and the headache, uh, especially if they have sunshine on, on, a, on a bare head, okay? People have lost their hair or even like babies, um, not much hair there. It can really affect it, especially the top of the head, very painful, have, and have quite a violent pain in the top of the head, the vertex. Better for pressure, better for cold application, um, and but never often been well since being sunburned or sunstroke. So not only give it while somebody may have come out of the sun and they're, they're, and they're feeling the effects of the sun or sunburn, but also they, they've, they've had it, you know, they've never been well since that, that time. Also good for radiation burns when people have radiotherapy. It's often can be also good for that as well. So again, another great remedy, for, particularly for ill effects of the sun, burns from the sun, okay? Next remedy is urtica urine. So this is good for simple scalds, simple, um, especially, or, or steam from hot water. So you see here the picture of the kettle, where people have been burned by the, by the steam from the kettle or whilst they're cooking or any situation like that. And with urtica urines, there's intense itching, burning, stinging pain. Remember this remedy is made from the nettle. So imagine a nettle, stinging nettle, how it's, it, it burns and it stings. No blistering with urticurians, just redness or red rays blotches. Okay, again, think of a nettle sting. Burning, stinging pain every, every time they move. So they move, oh, 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 they really feel it. Okay, this burning, stinging pain. Worse for touch, worse for water, worse for cool bathing. Uh, and the, the skin can, the burn can be worse after sleep. So they've slept and they wake up and it really is burning that area. It's really aggravated by, by sleep. You can get it as a gel or combined with calendula, very, very soothing. And it's similar to cantharis. So you need to look at cantharis and compare it, okay? Compare it with cantharis. But you're then down to two remedies out of, you know, nearly 3,000 remedies in the Materia Medica, but you just choose one of those, one of those remedies. Just look at the modalities, look at the sensations. Shiny uh, sunburn with stinging burning pain. So again, a big sunburn remedy. And again, don't underestimate, you know, sunburn. It can be really, really bad with, for people, especially if they've fallen asleep at the sun or the, they suddenly get in the sunshine, especially in the tropics where people aren't used to that, that, that sort of intensity that, of the sun there. So, so it's always good to have these remedies around because it can be incredibly painful and also can ruin people's holidays. It can really ruin people's holidays. I've had, I've had patients and clients, you know, who've that's, have had, especially when they've fallen asleep in the sun, and they're really, really, really bad, you know, and it's just ruining their holiday because they can't do anything and they're just always, they don't can't sit in the sun. And, you know, it's really can be quite painful um, and quite an issue for them. So the other remedy is phosphorus as well. Now, phosphorus is particularly an affinity for uh, people have to have had an electric burn. Um, so this is this may be a really good remedy to have. Because I would say, all oh, if you've had an electric burn, always seek medical attention. Um, but take this whilst you're on the on the way to get medical help. So often, when an electric burn occurs, the damaged area may look small on the surface, but there may be more extensive da damage underneath the skin. Okay, from from the electrical uh, shock or burn. And always get it examined by a healthcare professional because of that reason. But you can take frosters. It's a big remedy for electric shock and people have had electric shock, but also from electric burn. So please don't forget phosphorus, but always get medical help after an electric burn. So let's look at some topical applications you can do. So I think with all the topical um, applications used, which we're going to talk about now, um, I could uh, um, sort of bathing it uh, with water um, with a tincture in it. For example, we talk about calendula or a gel. So calendula is, as you know, one of the fantastic remedies uh, to use for healing. Good to use it in, in tincture, especially if it's warmed rather than the cool diluted, diluted in warm water. And it promotes healing and reduces inflammation, stops and clears infection. So good to have it in the first aid box. Now, this is how you use it. You get the tincture, take 10 or 15 drops and put it in a small glass of boiled or sterile water. OK. 
boiled or sterile water. So, so it, because you're going to be bathing the wound with, um, with it. So always dilute the tincture in water in a, in a large amount of water, but but often it's you know it's been boiled as well because uh, so it's sterile, and then you can bathe the uh, affected area. If it stings, dilute it even more, but add some more water to it. But it's a it's a it's a solution. You never put it neat onto a onto a burn. Always use it in a, a water solution. You can use also calendular gel, which prevents scarring as the wound heals. Or you can also use aloe vera gel, which is aloe vera is better known as the burn plant. So try to use gel or or these these solutions, these water solutions, rather than use cream. Okay, so calendula, fantastic keeny one. The next thing I also could suggest is is to use hypercal. So hypercal is a combination between hypericum and calendula. So so the calendula part really good for the healing. The hypericum part is good for for the pain. So you can apply a sterile dressing soaked in a solution of hypercal. And the solution is made, from, say, from 5 ml or 20 drops of tincture, of the tincture, the combination of hypercal, in, say, 200 or half a pint of water, of cool previously boiled water, just like what we talked about with the calendula. Keep the dressing moist and disturb it as little as possible, renewing it every 12 hours or so until the skin is healed. And you can also apply a calendula ointment around the edge of it as well, or calendula gel. So again, just two uh, topical things that you could use. You should always have this in, in your kit or have this at home, calendula uh, tincture or uh, hypercal. You can get it from any of the homeopathic pharmacies or over the counter at health food stores. But remember, you've got to dilute it in water. You do not put it on neat onto any wound. So the question I always get asked is, how do I prescribe these remedies? Again, use the 6C, 30C of the homeopathic remedy that you've got in your in your kit or at home. These are remedies you can buy over the counter at health food stores or homeopathic pharmacies. And take one dose every 15 minutes, okay, for three or four doses or until the symptoms improve. And you, you will feel it straight away or the person you're giving to will, will feel, feel the effect straight away. And you're looking, again, always remember, you're looking for the keynotes of the remedy, as we talked about in these remedies with like cantharis, you know, that raw burning pain, arsenicum, not only the burning pain, but they've got anxiety and restlessness. So we're always looking at the characteristic symptoms uh, of the remedy. You don't need every single thing of that remedy in order to prescribe. We're looking for a three-legged stool, which means looking for the three major keynote characteristic symptoms of that remedy. But if symptoms persist, seek a qualified practitioner, okay? You need to get help if it persists. And it doesn't seem to be resolving itself. And that's it. So thank you for, for listening. Uh, I've talked to some, some of the top remedies I think you should know for scolds and burns, basic things that you'll see at home and in everyday life. Please try it out. Please use it. There is, uh, there is other remedies. I've just given you what I think the top ones that you should know about. But go to those ones first and you will find that it will deal with nine out of ten of skulls and burns that you will see. Again, we haven't talked about deeper burns. Uh, it's not the place, I think, to talk about that. This is really for home prescribing. So please, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check us out on our website, www.chehomeopathy.com. And I look forward to seeing you next time.